So in this video, again, I've sped it up by four times. And we're going to carry on from putting the base coat on. We're going to go for basic highlighting and shading on the skirt. Um, essentially, sort of all the green areas. So initially, I put down a shading layer. And this consists of the base colour with a little bit of red um, to give it some contrast and a little dob of black just to sort of bring down the colour slightly. Um, again here I'm using the two brush blending technique that I went over in previous videos um, and laying down the colour in the creases as you can see. Um, the second brush I'm actually holding in my mouth um, Obviously, this is a voiceover done afterwards rather than um, during. Um, so, yeah, occasionally the camera decides to go out of focus. Um, I apologise if it goes out of focus for a long time and I didn't notice. Um, so, yeah, basically sort of laying down colours. Initially sort of going for a dark shade. Um, I come back in later with a darker shade, um, just to sort of deepen the, deepen the shading a bit more. Um, and I do come in with a highlight, just to uh, sort of bring it up slightly. I think looking at the final miniature, the sort of the final um, finish at the end of this video, um, I think the, the highlight needs to be brought up more. Um, it's not very bright, um, and the, the skirt is looking quite dark. So I'm going to bring that up. Um, bring it up a bit more in the next video. I think the shading as it stands is okay. Um, we can live with it as is. There may be a few areas like sort of under the skirt um, that need to be sort of polished up um, and just sort of neatened up slightly. The highlighting definitely needs to be neatened up. I was using the um, P3 Worm Green, I think it was, um, to do the highlighting with um, essentially I started off with a 50-50 mix and then went in with pretty much pure and that doesn't like, it's not a fan, it doesn't need to be a fan of the two brush blending technique particularly, I'm not sure why, it seems to sort of break up. You'll see later on when I actually put the highlights in, um, it, it seems to sort of, it's a very odd effect, it seems to sort of leave a sort of halo like the, the, the outside of the of the sort of area of paint is drying before the inside is and then when I try and sort of um, brush down the outside it's actually pulling the inside away because the paint's quite watery. Um, again I've, I've watered the paint down um, so you get a nice smooth layer, you always want to do that otherwise you're going to end up with a sort of n not so much a blotchy effect but sort of it's going to have quite a texture to it because you're going to have semi-dry, you're basically putting on semi-dry paint and then wiping it away. Um, and that, that's just going to sort of leave a blotchy effect. Um, there's, a, there's a few times in here uh, where I broke the cardinal rule, which is uh, never go over wet paint with more paint, because all you're going to do is lift off the, the previous wet paint layer, you always have to let it dry. So as you can see, most of the time what I'm doing is I'm putting one layer down, feathering the edges with the second brush, and then moving away, going somewhere else, even if it looks terrible or it hasn't sort of spread properly or anything like that, leave it to dry, move on to the next area. Um, but you'll probably notice there's a few times when I break that rule and it becomes very obvious because the paint breaks um, and you can see it leaves gaps in it and it, this it, it was very prone to do that on the highlighting layer. So coming back in here with a bit more of the base paint and this is the that's the worm green, the highlighting colour that I used. So you can see it there. I'm just going to mix up a quick sort of mid-tone highlight. I think what I'll probably do is I'll add some white to the worm green, um, maybe a touch of yellow as well. Um, there's definitely this is quite a yellowish green um, that I'm highlighting with. So I'll probably go in with a touch of yellow as well, just to sort of help it. But you can see how watery it is when I'm putting it down. Um, and there you can see it broke, um, broke in the center rather than the edges when I was trying to blend it out. And I had this problem all over the place. It was driving me absolutely insane when I was painting this. Um, hopefully mixing in sort of whites and other colors into it will help with that. Um, we'll keep it sort of 
a bit more sort of stable, as it were. Um, but essentially, this is this is the same technique again. You just sort of put the layer down where the highlights would be, um, sort of referring back to the zenithal highlighting. Um, that we did when we when we primed the model and um, what you can do is at that point in time if you're unsure of where the highlights are going to be um, I've, obviously I've been doing this for quite some time so you kind of learn where the highlights are going to go um, you can either sort of look down on top of the model um, literally sort of get a top down view and there's a couple of times where I do that um, and that gives you you can even actually see where the highlights are going to end up or when you do the zenithal highlighting during the priming stage um, you can actually um, take a photo of the miniature at that point in time so that you've got a reference shot of, of sort of the priming and the zenithal highlighting layers um, and that helps enormously with sort of learning where highlight layers are going to go um, where they're going to fit in where they're going to look good which is the important thing so coming in here I picked up some more of the paint um, this was all done on my um, ceramic palette. I think next time I'll probably do it on the wet palette because the paint was drying out very quickly under the lights. I have to have the lights quite close to film under. Um, this layer is the second highlight layer and it's pretty much um, almost pure worm green. So you can see, just sort of build it up and then sort of just take away the edges gently. And you can see kind of the blendings coming in a bit. Um, yeah, it's rough. It is at the moment. Um, it's certainly going to need cleaning up. Um, but that that will quite easily be accomplished by glazes of the base colour. Um, and then sort of go, going back over with the highlighting. This, this is a very iterative process. Um, when, you, when you're miniature painting, there really isn't such a thing as sort of slap down a bunch of paint and it looks great instantly it just doesn't happen unless you're an absolute master who's sort of done it so long that you can literally do that um, you're always going to go back tidy up mistakes here and there sort of clean up um, sort of blending areas that haven't really worked too well and glazing is a fantastic way of doing that essentially it's water it's very very watered down paint um, you're talking anywhere between four parts water up to eight parts water to one part paint so it's very 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 dilute paint and essentially instead of it, it's not a wash in the sense that it flows into the into the recesses like you would do with a wash um, you actually you don't load the brush up you just wet the brush and then just push it over the area and you can literally watch the area of area on the miniature go from dry to wet and that's what you want and then you, you wait for that to dry, you hair dryer it, blow on it, whatever to make it dry. Um, and that, done enough times, will leave colour behind. It's also a way of doing the blending. You can put successive highlights and shading on using that technique, but it's incredibly long. Um, it takes a very, very long time. Um, but it's an excellent way of to tidying up blends. It helps them, uh, helps them sort of um, fit in and... Um, smooth out quite well. Normally you'd go in with the base colour to do that kind of thing um, and that, that essentially sort of covers um, a multitude of sins. Um, you can see sort of, I mean you can see sort of the, the general idea of the highlighting and shading and I'm coming back in and I'm doing a bit of a glaze here and there where I've missed where I've missed bits or it's dried before I've had a chance to sort of feather the edges and I'm basically I'm coming back in with the base coat and just sort of going in there where the mid-tone should be so there we go and you can see the palette at the end there um, quite a mess of colors all sorts of sort of lights and darks there's the colors I used so you've got worm green I used a bit of the scorn red and just a straight Vallejo black along with the Audic 